your girl Siobhan and I wanted to let you know that we're doing something a little different this week. We're just coming back from our annual intensive which was amazing. I can't wait for us to share the details of how the weekend went and so we're not going to record this week. We're just taking a little break. We need to recuperate but since this podcast started at last year's annual intensive, we wanted to do uh, a blast from the past and take you back to our very first episode, which we launched during last year's intensive. So we've gone through 60 episodes and we are here to just go back to see how it all started. So enjoy this episode and we'll see you next week. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the very first episode of Real Women Talk. Woo! because <laughs> we are real women and real women talk hey <laughs> so if you don't know who who we are let us introduce ourselves my name is Shavarn Carter I am one of the facilitators and members of Real Women Rock Incorporated and we'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a minute and my beautiful host is Hello, I am Trenace Richardson, and I am the founder of Real Women Rock, and we are sisters. <laughs> we do life together, so y'all going to get all the life. Happening. All of the life. <laughs> this is so good. I'm so excited. I know. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. <sighs> Trenace, before we get into what this podcast is about, can you tell them a little bit about Real Women since you are the founder of Real Women Rock? Of course I can, y'all. So Real Women was founded in 2013, and we exist to create safe spaces for women to do personal development work on themselves. We call it soul work. And as a result of that, we do it in sister circles. So we host in-person and virtual sister circles across the country and abroad. Uh, we are based in the Washington, D.C. metro area, um, and we are are growing outward uh, in a big way. And one of those ways is this podcast. Yes, yes. So we have, I have been a part of Real Women since the beginning also. So Trinae started in 2013 and I um, was at one of the very first sister circles. So sister mm -hmm. circles is what we call them when we get together and we do soul work, like Trinae said. And we wanted this podcast to be an extension of the Real Women sister circle experience. So when you come to a sister circle, it's a private session. It's not recorded. Nobody, we can't give you a snippet of what happened in the circle because we want to create a safe space. We mean that literally. We yeah. want to have a safe space where women can just come in, be themselves, take off the mask, the titles, and just talk about what's going on in their lives. And so people are always trying to figure out what's going on. And we can't really share too much. We can share the experience and overview of it, but we can't talk about you know, the nuts and bolts of what we talk about. You had to be there to, to experience it. <laughs> you had to and be we there. want everybody to be able to experience a real, a real women's sister circle. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, here's a little extension of it so you can get a feel for what it's like. So that's what this podcast is all about. Our goal is to have real, honest dialogue about topics that impact women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like we are giving you a sneak peek into what it is that we do in Real Women Sister Circles through this uh, avenue. There will be a lot of us talking and doing some sister share. We'll invite some sisters on sometimes to do some share. Um, and it's going to be real talk. It's going to be authentic, exactly what we're thinking and feeling and non-judgmental because who needs that, right? <laughs> so. We need enough of that going on in the world. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you think we want folks to feel as they're listening and, and experiencing us? Yeah. So we want them to feel one understood. We want you to be like, you know what? You mm -hmm. get, you understand me. You know my life. Why you, you just get it. <laughs> You get me. You see me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's one of the things that we want our women to be able to feel. We also want them to feel entertained a little bit. You know, we got yeah. personality, so we want you to feel, you know, entertained and also enlightened. Yeah. We want you to walk away with something. This is just not for your viewing pleasure, but we want you to walk away with some nuggets that you can apply to your life. 
Yeah. So we want you to laugh because we are both comedians in another yeah. life. <laughs> want you to be inspired. Um, but and most of all, we want you to feel like we relate to what you're going through. Um, yeah. so I, I just think this is an avenue for us to really connect in another way on another level with a lot of women. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. So y'all, we got some segments, right? Cause we gotta have, we can't have a podcast without segments. So this first segment, and we'll walk you through each one so that you'll get a feel for how the podcast will be structured. But this first uh, section or segment is real talk. Mm. <laughs> mm. So in this segment, we're just going to highlight some things that might be on our mind, maybe something that happened on the weekend or just an instance where we want to share with you real talk. This what happened to me today. You know what comes to mind when I when you say that, like when mm -hmm. you're in a conversation with somebody, you're like, okay, so real talk, like, right? <laughs> like for real, for real, what happened? For real, <laughs> so, so right. we just get to kind of just let out whatever happened between the last time we had the podcast and this one, we get to share it. So I love exactly, that exactly, exactly. So this real talk moment, since this is our first episode, we want to do some real talk about who we are as mm -hmm. individuals. So Trinace, let's start with you. Real talk. Who are you? Oh, okay. So, so real talk. Mm -hmm. I am this and that. Yep. Right. So yep. if you have ever experienced real women, uh, one of the things that we have learned together that we have kind of ha latched on to together is that we are this and that. Shout out to our facilitator, Sherry Phaeton. Hey, um, hey. Yes. Hey, girl. Hey. Who introduced this to us. But the idea that it is OK for me to have different aspects of me, to express myself in different ways, to, to show different expressions of me because they are all me. So I am a preacher and I have been a church girl all my life. And uh, love that aspect of me, love that expression of me, and not but, and, <laughs> and I am I am just as righteous as I am ratchet, <laughs> meaning I am a full grown woman who has thoughts and and um, and feelings and not afraid to express them. And I've had to evolve to that because I thought as a preacher, I'm not supposed to, you know, as a Christian, others, you know, can, can put themselves under that umbrella. I'm not supposed to have certain thoughts or feelings, but I do, I still have them. And mm -hmm. so I'm um, this and that. And so I'm a preacher, I'm a singer, I'm a creative, I write. Um, I'm a mom. I have two beautiful children who are not babies anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, they are 14 and 27 at the time That's of it. this. <laughs> so yes. just, oh, oh. <laughs> um, and um, I am a wife of 24 years. Everybody watching, everybody listening should be clapping right now. Just go ahead and clap right now. <laughs> That is two dozen. I'm just saying that was two mm -hmm. dozen Christmas mm -hmm. cream. So mm. we've been uh, we've been through roller coaster rides, ups and downs, and we're still here. I'm so appreciative to him and his support of all the things that I do. Um, and so I've got a lot going on. I'm an administrator at a college, and so I'm really proud of being a leader um, in education as well. And there are different aspects to me. I think if I had to answer it and sum it up, I am this and that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it. yeah. That's so Sherry blessed us with that so oh much. David, this and that, because it makes so much sense. Yeah, It makes so much sense. And even I've begun using it when it's just how I'm feeling that day, even, you know, like I'm, it's okay for me to feel upset or bored or angry or sad because I'm this and I'm that. And I, there's like, there's no, you know, I'm going to experience joy, but right now this is how I feel. And it's okay to be right here where I am. I'm this and I'm that in so many ways that has blessed me. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And that. Period. Yeah. 
So, um, so, so, Siobhan, okay. real, talk, real talk, who are you? Good girl, let me tell you who I am. I, <laughs> tell me. My core, the essence of me, I am serenity, I am solace, I am brilliance, I am delight, I am love. That is mm. who I am at my core. That is delicious. Delicious, right? That's yummy goodness. Um, mm. I had to go through this exercise when I was going through my coaching program. And that's one of the things that we had to do, like this essence exercise. So I really took that. Like we had to, you know, pull out those words that define who we are at our core. And I really took that to, to um, took that home. But and not but and. I am multifaceted. I am ratchet. I am from the South. <laughs> I am a Florida girl. Um, I am a life saver. That's mm. what I call it. I mm. savor life. I love to live out loud. I am unapologetically me. I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And y'all um, hear me? That's showing up the truth. <laughs> Damn, just saying. You know, I lived in a box for so long, and we'll talk about that at some point, that I am out of the box, and I love it out here. Like, I will not be put in a box. I will not be limited. I will be who I authentically am, and that's just it. And so, and I don't apologize for that. So, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. I live in the D.C. area. I am a leader in the federal government. I am an author. I'm a publisher. I am a business owner. I am a significant other. Mm -hmm. I'm a daughter. Um, I don't have any children, so I am living a child-free life. Mm -hmm. And I love to travel. I love to eat. <laughs> I love to eat. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. You do. I love this. Oh, I love it because I get to hear us declare, kind of just yeah. express who we are, who we have experienced each other as yeah. uh, as well. So thank you yeah. for that. You made me think yeah. about, I love frogs. That's a whole thing that people uh -huh. don't understand, but yeah. we can get into those things later. They just make me happy because people um, don't like them. And they, so they're yeah. underdogs, you know, and yeah. I'm like, but, the, and then they go through so much change and metamorphosis. So I love yeah. outdoors and nature. Yes, we get to express all of who we are on this day. And I've never heard you talk about the frogs and why you love them. And that's so beautiful because I am people. I do not. <laughs> I mean, people, it's me. I don't like People those. is you. <laughs> right, right. But it, it's so you, though, because you are that person uh, mm -hmm. where you see the beauty in people, you know, mm -hmm. and so it's such it's so characteristic of who you are. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank mm -hmm. you. Real talk. Yeah, real talk. Real talk. Real talk. So we'll do that every week with different things that just are on our heart to share. So, mm -hmm. so stay tuned for that. All right. So let's get into our next segment. Deep dive. Oh, Lord. We're going to some deep diving. So the, in this segment, we expound on a nugget that was shared in maybe the most recent sister circle or maybe a previous sister circle that we've had in Real Women. And we just go into a little bit of depth on this show, maybe some nuggets that we pulled from it, a highlight or something that really hit us, hit home for us mm -hmm. that we want to talk about, you know, individually and together. So. Mm -hmm. Deep dive. Can I go? Can I go deep? Can I? Uh -huh. deep? Yeah, we gonna get. We gonna get into it. <laughs> we're gonna get into it. Let's go on and take a dive. So, um, let we're starting this podcast off inaugural episode. So let's just can women get along? Mm. We're talking about real women. We're talking about sisterhood. We have these sister circles. Um, and we are bringing women together. Our effort is to bring them together in a safe space, in a non-judgmental space. And so we have discussed this at length <laughs> in, in Real Women, and yeah. we are extending this to you. And we would love to know what your thoughts are um, on whatever platform you're watching this while we share. Um, can women really get along? And so just thinking about your journey with women Siobhan, what what are your thoughts? I'll share mine with you after. But what have what have you what has your journey looked like as it relates to women? Honey, let me tell you. So the short answer is yes. I believe women can get along. Now, now that is my answer. Right. 
So if you were to ask me that before, um, I don't know. I don't know what my answer would have been. So my journey with women has been, you know, have some joys and pains. And I was thinking about that um, a little more today. One, I grew up as an only child. Yeah. So I am used to being in my own little world. Mm-hmm. You know, what bother me. I'm used to doing my own thing, which is probably part of the reason why I just do me, you know. Yeah. And I, I I had girlfriends in high school, you know, grade school. I had a best friend and all of that. So I had, you know, relationships with women. But it wasn't until I went to college and I had to have roommates is where the dynamic started to shift with mm-hmm. women because I wasn't mm-hmm. used to living in close proximity to women. Like my mom was there, but she ain't paying me no mind. She was in her room doing her own thing or right. just leaving me be. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have to deal with interacting with women on a close, you know, uh, intimate level as it relates mm-hmm. to having a roommate. So that's when the dynamic started to shift for me because I'm used to being in my own little world. And I'm not used to having to communicate when someone else wants to communicate. I, I'll mm-hmm. do it when, when it's time for me and when I feel like it. But, mm-hmm. you know, when I have a roommate who is happy-go-lucky and wants to talk in the morning and I do not. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to navigate that. So I would just shut down. I would stay within. And then my roommate is like, well, what is going on with you? Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about it. Now she thinks something about me. Now I feel misunderstood. And now I create emotional distance between me and women. And so Can I, I say something real quick about that? That, yeah. that is so interesting because what you just said, there's a whole judgment happening on her end yeah. and it just hasn't been discussed. So now she think you stuck up or whatever. Yeah. And you just have a whole makeup where you haven't had to do this before. That's mm-hmm. like really enlightening for me. Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. And she was just like, you know, she believes you're supposed to talk even when you should you don't feel like it. And I'm like, no, I don't want to talk. But I didn't communicate that. So I just I'm just quiet. So now I seem moody. I seem distant. You know, I seem unapproachable when really I am wrestling with I am in a space that I don't want to be in. I just want to be in my own space, but I don't know how to communicate that. Mm. I don't know how to articulate that. And so that created me being around women and having fun and doing all these things, but the emotional distance. Mm. So we can be in the same house, but not be close. Mm. And that, that's how, you know, my relationships. And so because I internalized that I was misunderstood, that um, I was moody, I was too much for women mm. um, because I was dealing with my own stuff, then that meant I, I didn't value the relationship. Now, Mm -hmm. I had friends, like I said, but it wasn't the close relationship. They didn't get me. Why didn't they did? And so that that morphed into me wanting women around, but not really. So Mm -hmm. it's not not valuing the relationships with women until I started to go through life. Life started to happen and I realized that I really needed women. So it was it was a journey for me to get to the point of. Yeah, I need women in my life and women can get along. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I can see threads of similarity Mm -hmm. with your story and mine. Um, Because I grew up with brothers in the Mm -hmm. house um, and a very close, large family, um, as well as a large church family, I was always connected to people growing up. So I didn't have that same level of isolation that you felt. Yeah. Um, what that ended up doing for me. And it's so funny how two separate scenarios, right? Yeah. But it can yield some similar stuff, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, it's crazy. So mm-hmm. what I felt was I've always been this overachiever. Um, I've always wanted to do really well. And I, I kind of track that back to wanting to, to really please like my daddy and, you know, who wasn't always in the home and that kind of thing. So I've always wanted to please. So I'm doing well in school and all that kind of stuff. And all of that was applauded in my communities, in my family and in my church. And what ended up happening was as kids, my age, especially the girls, my age, mm-hmm 
hated on me. You hear me? Before um, before haters was a thing. <laughs> I was experiencing it. And it just felt so unfair. Like I would come home from choir rehearsals or theater, re just crying because people, you know, who you think you all at? I I just want to be your friend, you know. It's kind of I just want you to like me. Um, and so I, my feelings were constantly hurt. And so what I ended up doing was trying to fit in. I ended up dimming my light and trying to do what everybody else. I I remember telling some of my cousins that I'd had sex before I'd actually had sex because wow. they were having. Something. Just to fit in with them, yeah, and be able to have conversation. Like I'm not too high and mighty. I've had that, you know. Just yeah. if you'd ask me how it happened, I wouldn't have been able to tell you. But, <laughs> but it's so crazy. Yeah, um, and it was probably in young adulthood, um, college age. Flip side for you that mm -hmm. I began to embrace sisterhood. Wow, because, girl, right? So because I joined a sorority, okay. um, I was away from the people who, you know, I keep using that word, but hated on me. So I'm starting a new and a fresh and people received me well mm -hmm. in college. And so it was a, it was a opening for me, an opening of a door for me for sisterhood in college. And then when I got married, I don't know where this thought process comes from, but somewhere down the line, I thought once you get married, you got to forsake all others, not just other <laughs> millions, but yeah. Everybody, yeah, you can't have friends no more. You know how you've experienced yeah. those women are like she disappeared, girl. She got right. married. Yeah. We ain't seen her no more. That was me. And I, I believe me, please. You think you know it's literally it's like, oh, I can't go talk to nobody else but my husband. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh -huh. I can't go, I can't to go to the party. You know, I can't go to see my visit my friend out of town no more because I got a husband and you right. know that kind of thing. And so people literally were like from college. Y'all heard from Trinace? No, she she got married. She did, and then I did it in ninety days. So it was like, like she got what? I just talked to her. I just talked to her. Right. So, so I I abandoned a lot of my sister relationships that I had built that I treasured, but thought, you know, I did, I prioritized my marriage over them. And Greg wasn't even asking me to do that. I just right, right. did it, you know? Yeah. Um, but as a result of that, I was out here still trying to be overachiever and impressed and all that kind of stuff, but on a leadership level now, isolated. So mm. it took me isolating all the way on the other end mm -hmm. because I did not have these sister relationships to to be safe around, to hold me up when I'm, you know, out here as a leader, I thought I got to pour out instead of, yeah. so I, and I didn't think I could trust anybody with my most sacred personal thoughts because I'm a leader out here mm -hmm. in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it wasn't until Real Women that I really just started really opening up in a real mm -hmm. way um, mm -hmm. with women. So I, that's been my my women journey. It's mm -hmm. sort of flipped on its head for both of us. Yeah. I guess I'll answer the short answer now. I do believe women can get along, but my adult take on it is it has to be in a safe, non-judgmental space yeah. where we are putting our thoughts about what's right and what's wrong and all that on the back burner for, mm. for the sake of this woman's um, sacred space. So yeah. we, are, we are creating a place for her in our lives mm -hmm. that is, and, and we can get to the point where we're like, girl, don't do it. Don't do it. You know, that kind of stuff. But if that has to be created and cultivated mm -hmm. and that can't be done until you, a woman is able to show you her scars or her ugly side and you're able to say, I, I receive you and accept you anyway. Yeah. 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 You know what that makes me think about? So one, that's what my current inner sister circle is. Like Trinace is a part of my, my current mm -hmm. inner sister circle and Ashley and Neff are mm -hmm. our other sisters. 
Mm -hmm. And because I was dealing with so much self-judgment, self-condemnation, I needed to be around women who saw through who I saw myself as Mm -hmm. and saw me as the the beautiful, amazing woman that I am Mm -hmm. and allowed me to organically open up. And it was just like, y'all was just like, yeah. It was like, y'all were pouring into me and telling me, you're fine the way you are. You Mm -hmm. know, your experience has been with women. We're not here bringing that type of energy. Like Mm -hmm. we just want you to be like, it was a call forward for me to Mm -hmm. just be my authentic self. And Mm -hmm. it took a while for me to open up, but there was so much patience and grace, you Mm -hmm. know, in that space to where it was just like, okay, Mm -hmm. safe here. Go in the water and be like, okay. <laughs> you know what? I think all of us were doing that. I, and I think that's what it takes. It takes taking a risk. Yeah. But I think all of us were like putting our toe in the water with each other yeah. and taking a step here and there. Yeah. I remember one car ride where I was like, I'm not ready. To, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to take this deep dive. I'm not ready. But you, but at the end of it, you all still received me. And yeah. so yeah. And, and I would say it's not that to answer to go back to our question, it's mm-hmm. not that we can get along with every woman. Right. Right. It's not that we're supposed to have um the 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 most sacred and closest relationships with every woman, yeah. but I believe every woman needs to have her circle. Every yeah. woman needs to have somebody mm-hmm. that she can be all of those things with. Mm-hmm. And, and she receives all of somebody else, no matter what. Yeah. Um, that That's, I don't even know what I would do now without that in my life. And I, and I feel for women whose answer to this question is no. Yeah. Because they have been hurt mm-hmm. and they have been broken their trust has been broken. They have been judged when they thought it was a safe space and they put themselves Mm -hmm. out there. They got talked about like, there's so many horror stories Mm -hmm. that we've seen and experienced and it takes us being that for somebody. Mm -hmm. And it takes us venturing out to be that and Mm -hmm. allow somebody to be that for us. It's just, it's, it's magical on the other side if you can dare to do it. Yeah. And that when you said that, that made me think about those women. I was thinking about that before you even mentioned it about those women who had who don't have this the type of experience that we've had Mm -hmm. to have that safe space um, and has had traumatic experiences with women. So it's like, what what would you say to that woman who has been it's almost like a woman who's been in a relationship with a man and she's had so many negative experiences that she's afraid to open up like mm-hmm. she don't have no more risk taking in her you know to put that toe in the water to try to cultivate something with a woman like how where where does she go yeah where does she start so yeah. I, I i i'm going to say three things come to mind and some, you know, somewhere it might feel or sound cliche, but I'm still going to say it because I, mm-hmm. I believe it to be true. So I'm first going to say it has only helped me to process my trauma, my issues in counseling and whatever that looks like for you to be able to release and talk through things that you've been going through. Because if not, I would have been holding things in mm-hmm. and never processing what I was going through so that I would have never even felt safe trying to express myself to anybody else. Right. But the more I've been thinking and processing and, and getting some good counsel from a counselor, I think it has helped me articulate my thoughts a little bit better to someone I'm willing to take the risk to. So I would just say, starting with processing your own stuff within you, journaling, wherever you need to start financially, you know, maybe you don't have all the wherewithal, there are a lot of resources out here right now, but I would just say, start somewhere. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's a spiritual advisor, wherever you feel like you need to start, to start um, that processing piece, I think is important inside of you. Because what that also does is it starts to open you up. It's almost like a closed hand or a closed mouth doesn't get fed, right? Mm -hmm. So you open yourself up a bit more 
when you leave room, when you release and leave room for some stuff. The, the second thing I would say is I believe that we've all thought about uh, a relationship, a sistership with somebody. Mm -hmm. and, and that has, it's either been an opportunity that we haven't ventured on or um, we haven't taken the risk. We see, you know, see somebody who just looks pleasant in a class yep. that we're taking or at church, or, you know, we, we go to the store. I have invited women that I, at work that I didn't know well, that I want to know well, invited mm -hmm. them for coffee. Yeah. I mean, at the very least, it'll just be coffee. We'll never talk again because we didn't connect well, but we've decided coffee a month, you know, is going to be our thing because we connected in a way that allowed us to want to continue. So I would just say, if you've seen someone, if you've gotten a gut feeling, take the risk and invite her, just do mm -hmm. something low risk for you. Right. Um, you know, something temporary, low risk for you that would allow mm -hmm. you to venture out um, and and do something different with that. Um, I'll stop with those two. Anything you can think of? So when I think about me um, and, and what that would look like, putting my yeah, thinking about that from from that person's perspective. Definitely counseling that that was helpful for me mm -hmm. because I started counseling in 2013 and I started Real Women in 2013. Those two uh, tools, those two places I could go to process my stuff, my trauma, my past experiences that helped me to open up mm -hmm. and in Real Women. I got to observe women. Mm -hmm. So I would say for a woman to put herself in environments where there are women who are working on themselves doing some type of per personal development work mm -hmm. so that you can see who you naturally gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. I think it was a very organic uh, process and natural process for us to connect. And I think mm -hmm. a God thing, honestly, yeah. um, for us to connect and for our sisters to connect with each other. And so I think, you know, we put ourselves in the environment and then it just organically happened. So yeah. leave room for that, you know, that we don't always have to be the ones to figure it out always yeah. just put yeah. ourselves in the environment where you know, God can move on people's hearts and even our own hearts. Yeah. I love that. And I, so what's funny is my third thing was going to be real women. And I was okay. like, it's so, corny. it's so corny to be up here and say that. But <laughs> I love how you framed it. You framed it so much more uh, professionally than I would have. Um, so glad you did that. Uh, but no, but I, I honestly, I love that you said that because putting ourselves in an environment where that feeling of non-judgment, that feeling of sisterhood permeates the atmosphere, yeah. makes it okay. If yeah. you think about like, oh, this is such, it's such a wild example. I hope it's not too much of a departure, mm -hmm. but if you think like I've, if you've been in an abusive home, like yeah. you're always like, this on yes. tent in that house like mm -hmm. that's that's the feeling that's in the right. house and mm -hmm. it permeates your being right mm -hmm. yeah versus someone who has not experienced that in a home it's just like you know i'm celebrated i'm appreciated like it just yeah. it you, it exudes out of you because of your environment well right. if we put ourselves in that environment and honestly that's why I really believe women can get along because I really don't connect with no women that don't get along with me, you know, like all mm -hmm. those double negatives I just said. Like, <laughs> I'm not I'm not connecting. If I see we're not going to connect, I'm not mm -hmm. going to break my neck to, to stay in a relationship with somebody I'm not. I mean, I will love you from afar. I will yeah. appreciate you and respect you from afar. Right. So, so I'm only... Uh, putting myself in spaces mm -hmm. where I can receive sisterhood and give it. Um, yeah. I think that makes such a big difference. It does. It mm -hmm. absolutely does. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That so, was good. <laughs> yeah. so our answer is yes. Let me yes. Put it along. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's our deep dive. Now let's move into our next segment. Mm -hmm. Put... Her, put, what we say? What is it called? Put myself in her shoes. We coming up for air, just a little bit. We coming yeah. up a little bit. 
yeah, yeah. Put myself in her shoes. Mm -hmm. So with this segment, we're going to be talking about trending topics, questions that you may have when you write into us in our message box or if with us individually or however you want to reach out to us to get send us a question, scenarios that we may see mm -hmm. that we just want to talk about on a lighter note. But the rules of the game is are mm -hmm. put myself in her shoes. Mm -hmm. Because that is the essence of real women. We don't just give advice to our sister. If our sister is sharing something, we don't be like, well, what you should do. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. We put ourselves in her shoes and we start with our own experience mm -hmm. or our own take on it before we offer anything to our sister. And so we want to model that in this podcast. So let's mm -hmm. put ourselves in somebody's shoes. Today. I'm ready. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all. So if you are, you know, in the social media world, if you listen to radio in the morning when you're driving to work, you may have heard about this story from Stra Shirley Strawberry on the Steve Harvey Morning Show, mm -hmm. whose um, phone conversations with her estranged husband, who is uh, in jail right now, were leaked mm -hmm. for the public consumption months worth of conversations and they have been released you know on a um a weekly basis just private conversations i know they're being recorded but they're private conversations and just people are weighing in on them just all the kind of stuff that you can think about are in conversations we're in these and it's just mm -hmm. so unfortunate and so the question is what let me see hold on how would you handle your private conversations, your pillow talk with your significant other, or if it's just, you know, conversations in the group chat? Because sometimes mm -hmm. we have some conversations in the group mm -hmm. that we have to be privy to. So how would you feel about that being leaked for mm -hmm. public consumption? Say mm -hmm. everybody in on it. Woo, child. <laughs> Can I put myself in her shoes? Put myself in her shoes. Okay, so putting myself in her shoes, Lord, I'm praying for her. Yeah. And, you know, I've heard all the things, heard her share and apologize and all of that. Yeah. Putting myself in her shoes, first of all, it made me um, sad for those who have these household names who are known really well. I used to want to be one of those folks. You know, I used to want to see my name in lights and be, yeah. you know, popular. And it just, I decided I don't have to have that anymore. <laughs> it's so much that comes with that. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah. people just in your business that don't, you know, have anything to do with it. None. Mm -hmm. um, and so putting myself in her shoes, I... Um, hindsight is 2020, but mm -hmm. I know that I have had pillow talk yeah. that I would not want recorded. And yes, you know, she was in a different scenario knowing, you know, where she was and what was being recorded, but it was her husband and she was trying to connect with him. And, you know, how, who among us have, has not found ourselves <laughs> right? <laughs> Ooh. Um, Ooh. Saying some things that maybe we shouldn't have said, or that in the, in the context or the environment that we shouldn't have said it, mm -hmm. and so um, I personally believe, you know, she has a right. I have a right to have to my feelings, yeah, my opinions. I believe that I should have a safe space to share them with someone. Mm -hmm. I personally just have to be extra mindful of this social media world and this, you know, where every cell phone, somebody could be recording you while they're looking like they just taking their own picture or looking at their right. phone. They're right. literally taking a picture of you like right. that. Mm -hmm. That's some scary stuff. And so I, it, it makes me putting myself in her shoes makes me extra cautious. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have done exactly what she did. I would have apologized. I would hope that mm -hmm. I would have just owned it and yep. apologized if if all of my private conversation was put on front street what i know now that mm -hmm. i did not know before um when i when i was probably my most scared of what people thought of me mm -hmm. is that when i am honest and vulnerable even when it doesn't make me look good or look the best 
the people who love me are going to love me anyway. Yes. And yeah. the people who, who are looking for a reason not to like me yeah. are not going to like me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I would mm -hmm. own it. Um, if, if I put myself in her shoes, um, and try to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. I feel similar. So putting myself in her shoes, my heart breaks for mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. um, because of the embarrassment that comes with that, because of the shame, the guilt that comes with that. And that just does something because it's like, I have to look at myself in mm -hmm. the mirror um, because of the circumstances and just feeling like I'm talking, like you said, I'm having a conversation with my significant other who I have you know, done life with for mm -hmm. eight years. And this is someone who I think I can talk to, you mm -hmm. know, and so for everything to come out and, and how it is, it's just so embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And I know how that feels. I haven't had definitely anything on this level, but I know how it feels to think one thing mm -hmm. about your significant other, but then to find out another mm -hmm. that like the rug being pulled up from up under you. So mm -hmm. dealing with that on top of all of this stuff being leaked and some of the conversations that have been had, it's just like, this is too much. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that I would just want to go away and retreat somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, just to get, find my bearings because mm -hmm. all these voices would just, you know, take me under, you know what I mean? And, and just the depression and all of that. So I just wouldn't be able to stay connected, definitely to social media. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to stay connected because it's just too many voices, too many mm -hmm. negative, you know, too much negative energy that's permeated over and over. You see the the blogs and the, the headlines and all those things. So I wouldn't be able to heal in that environment. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would have to kind of steal away and disconnect um, and and just hopefully lean on the people who are offering me grace in this season, who are there 10 toes down in in the midst of what I'm going through and, you know, find find solace and just like, God, please help me, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whew. So our, our thoughts and prayers go out to her. Um, mm -hmm. And anyone else who, you know, we've all been there at some point where embarrassment and some level of shame, like, to, you yeah. know, finding ways to release that so that you mm -hmm. can move on. That is all of our plight at some point. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yep. So we put ourselves in her shoes and mm -hmm. our hearts and prayers go out to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So our last segment, sister. Oh, sister. <laughs> This last segment is going to be a spiritual nugget. Um, we are um, faithful women. Like we are full of knowing that um, God is with us. And for you, that, remember, there's no judgment here. So whatever expression of God that is for you, whatever spiritual nugget Ex, you know, whatever aspect of spirituality you can take from this, um, we want we want that for you. It's our gift to you. And it's just a nugget to think about. Um, and honestly, sometimes it'll come from a Christian perspective. Sometimes it'll come from another faith tradition. And sometimes it'll just be a, a nugget of wisdom that we can, can kind of walk away with. And again, it's not us... Uh, uh, telling you or, <laughs> you know, kind of um, giving you what you should do. It really is just a thought for us to consider uh, as we close out our episode. And so I, I was thinking about everything that we just talked about. And um, I, I am a Christian minister, although I teach world religions, so I have a respect for all of them. Um, but there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about a three-stranded cord Mm. And how a three-stranded cord cannot be easily broken. Mm. And 
the interpretation of that is that if you are by yourself and isolated, then that kind of cord is thin and easily broken. Mm. But to have other cords, so other people, um, to have you know a faith in God that will hold you and sustain you um, in a relationship, you know wh whether it's you and your boo or your partner and God, whatever you interpret that as, isolation is a breeding ground for brokenness. Mm. Isolation mm. is a breeding ground for brokenness. Mm. Um, and, and so a three-stranded cord allows us to know that we need to have at least one or two places we can go, um, one or two safe spaces, one or two um, community members, whatever, whatever that seems like to you as a stronger bond that will hold you together in those most difficult times. Mm -hmm. And in turn, you can be there for that other person in that other scenario when they when you are needed, when they need you. I would just hope that we would all find our strands, that we would not be isolated cords out here um, so that we can, because at our essence, the last thing I'll say is at our essence, we are whole. Our expression of ourselves is aspects of who we are mm -hmm. making up a whole being. We mm -hmm. are we are whole. Mm -hmm. We are whole. And so the way that we can express that in life is to connect with other people who lift that up out of us yes. so that we're always reminded that mm -hmm. we are, you know, we are beautiful no matter what's going on, that all of those things that are in us um, are, are there, regardless of what we are thinking and experiencing within mm -hmm. ourselves. A three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Real talk. That's yummy goodness. That's yummy goodness. Mm. Say la. Yeah. Say la. Say yeah. la. This has been good. Oh, we did it in our personal episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. This has been real women, real talk. Yeah, like, really. yeah. <laughs> this is what it has been, and this is what we wanted it to be. So yeah. we just gonna grow from here, y'all. We yeah. excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll see y'all soon. We yeah. are real women and real women talk. Yes, they do all day. <laughs> <laughs> Woo.